never knew about the Prometheus Remote API, and why am I even talking about this? Well, there's been a whole bunch of questions on the mailing list recently. Not a whole bunch, a few. So I thought I'd come up here and, and lay down a few reasons why it is the way it is. So for those who don't know, the Prometheus Remote Write API allows you to send samples that Prometheus scrapes to other systems. Um, I've listed some of the systems here. In the um, Prometheus repo is the remote storage adapter. Brian wrote one called the SQL read adapter, which is actually not for the Write API, but for the read API. Um, and of course Cortex, and these can write and read from some of OpenTSDB, Influx, and Graphite. Um, I'll mainly be focusing on the write path because it's more complicated than the read path. Um, yeah, so the keynote here is that we send samples as protobuf encoded and then snappy compressed inside the body of a HTTP message. So first, why did we do that? Uh, why didn't we use gRPC? That was mainly because we had problems getting this through an ELB on uh, AWS, although I think most of these problems are now solved, so in the future we might move to gRPC. Um, in general, if you want like a really cool demo and everything, go and uh, watch uh, Julius's talk from uh, KubeCon in Berlin. That was really good. And I'm going to mainly focus on these four things, ordering guarantees, dynamic sharding, uh, snappy streaming, and the future. Um, so one a minute, hopefully. Ordering guarantees. Why do we have ordering guarantees? Well, first, the guarantee is that Prometheus will deliver for a given time series the sample in timestamp order. Um, why do we have these? This is because the first system that used this interface, which was Cortex, used the same storage layer as Prometheus, and this is a guarantee that the Prometheus storage layer needs um, because of the chunk encoding. Um, so how do we do this? We shard the delivery of these um, samples into multiple different queues and we shard them by the hash of the metric uh, and all its labels. Um, so internally, if you know the code base, this is called the fingerprint. Um, okay, so that's the first thing to bear in mind. Uh, this hopefully won't be a pain for anyone, but this does kind of uh, inform the next thing I'm gonna talk about, which is the dynamic sharding. So previously, for a long time, we just had a fixed number of shards, I think it was 10. Um, recently, we've added this dynamic sharding, which should scale the number of shards you need, depending on the number of samples per second you're in, um, your scraping and the uh, throughput and latency of the system you're writing them to. Um, we do this dynamically, we use a PID style controller, it doesn't actually have the D, so it's just a PI controller. Um, it has bugs, so uh, but most of them should be fixed. Um, the aim for this was for it to be general enough that you wouldn't actually need to ever tune it or care about that it existed. Um, but there's been some recent discussions on the mailing list and some good reasons why you might want to tune this thing, like, for instance, change the batch size, change the queue length, these kind of things. So now the inputs to this are tunable in the Prometheus config file. Um, these are undocumented, and they're probably going to change. Right, number three, Snappy and streaming. Um, when we first wrote this, we used uh, Snappy's streaming support, which is in the Go library, but unfortunately this is not part of the Snappy spec. So every language library implements streaming differently using a custom framing uh, protocol. Um, so recently in Prometheus 1.7, we got rid of this uh, streaming framing and just went for raw Snappy. This unfortunately means anything that was working with 1.6 won't work with 1.7. We did do a bump in the version, so there's a header field on the HTTP request, so we bump the version so you can detect this, and if you want to see an example of how to do that in the Cortex code, it can deal with both. Um, but this has caught a few people out on the mailing list. So finally, uh, in the future, we are considering moving to gRPC for the transport. Um, this just means we have to write less code, and gRPC is cool. Um, remote read improvements, currently the remote read path um, will block any queries if the endpoint's down, so we want to fix that, we want to put timeouts and so on on there. Um, also, the remote write path is a bit slow, and with Prometheus 2.0, it's probably slower than writing locally, which sucks. So I'm going to spend a bit of time in the coming months uh, optimizing that. Um, we also want to take advantage of the new appender batching and lots of the new optimizations in Prometheus 2.0. Um, so that will go in there. We might relax these ordering guarantees. It depends uh, what the feedback is, but I'm hoping to relax the requirement for them in Cortex. And therefore, if, if Cortex doesn't need them and no one else needs them, hopefully I can relax them. And I want to support more authentication types, so like short-lived uh, session tokens and so on that get refreshed periodically. Okay, thanks very much.